Hi and welcome to Demon Questions from On Maths, where we look at the more challenging GCSE Maths questions. Enjoy! Hi and welcome to Demon Questions from On Maths. So, in these sessions, we are going to be looking at the more challenging questions. Now, these are the AO2, AO3 questions in Teacher Speak. In other words, the ones that are unusual, are difficult, the ones you open the exam paper and go, I've never seen this one before in my life, how am I going to do this? Hopefully you have all the skills, and if you don't, then you go to onmaths.com and brush up on your skills, but you, you should have all the skills to be able to answer the question. In these videos, we're going to show you strategies to be able to work out a question, work out what you're going to do, work out how to get the first mark, work out how to get started with these questions. The difficulty is you look at a really complicated problem and you go, oh, I can't do this at all. And yet there's a circle there you could work out the area of. There's a part of it you can kind of understand and you can get the ball rolling. They are very generous with early marks on this. And on the foundation, this is worth 25% of your marks on the higher 30% of your marks. So it's a big chunk of marks that this is worth and we need to be getting. We're also going to be looking at more wordy questions, which again, on the foundation is 25%, on the higher is 30%. And this is, uh, un you're expressing uh, how you find out a method, you're proving something potentially, or you're showing why Jimmy is correct, and all those kind of questions. So, um, the way I structure this is there's 20 marks on each demon um, paper. We're either doing non-calculator or calculator, higher or foundation. And within those 20 marks, I've evenly distributed the uh, topics and I've evenly distributed the grade. So it starts at a low grade and gets higher. I've also put the grade boundaries on so you can roughly estimate whereabouts you are. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. Okay, so in this question we say a well, we see that a square has an area of 121 centimetres squared and we're asked for the perimeter of the square. So the first thing I would do is do a quick little diagram of this square. And we know that the area is 121 centimetres squared. Okay, so I know it's a square, so therefore the width or the base and the height will be exactly the same. Okay, and I know to find area, I do this one times this one. So I know that x times x, or x squared, equals 121. And if I put my lines in, then I can square root both sides. And so x is 11. So I know that 11 times 11 is 121. Now the temptation is to think, right, I've got the answer, 11 but it's us, us for the perimeter of the square. So I know perimeter is the distance around the square, and each side is 11. So it's 11 plus 11 plus 11 plus 11, or 11 times 4, which is the perimeter, which is 44. So the answer is 44 centimeters. OK, so this question says that we have an electricity bill and we have two readings um, from the um, electric meter uh, and we're given the price per unit and we're asked to find out how, how much this person James paid. So the old reading is where the uh, meter started, so it started at 6,651 and the new reading is where it ended. So the first thing we've got to do with this question is figure out how many units were used. So to do that, we're going to take them away from each other. Okay, 6 take away 1 is 5, 5 take away 5 is 0, 8 take away 6 is 2, 6 take away 6 is 0. So we've got 205 units used. Now it says the price per unit is 13 pence. So what we need to do is we've got 205 units and they're 13 pence each. So the total cost of the bill is 205 times 13. So we're going to do a little grid to work this out. Let's 
liquid looks a bit small. So 205, okay, 0, 10, so we don't need to worry about that column. And 13 is 10 and 3. So 200 times 10 is 2,000. 5 times 10 is 50. 200 times 3 is 600. And 3 times 5 is 15. So we can add these together. Make sure you line them up nicely when you add them together. Otherwise it's very difficult to add them. Okay, so the first one's five, then six, then six, then two. Now that's in pence. So in pounds that would be twenty-six pounds and sixty-five pence. Okay, so for this question, um, we've basically got um, the mean of the numbers. We know what three of them are, but we don't know what the fourth one is because the uh, numbers rubbed off. Okay, so first thing for this question is think about how you would work out the mean. You'd work out the mean by adding these numbers together and then getting the answer and dividing by the amount of numbers we've got, which is four. And we know that equals 12. So if I put an algebra letter in, let's call it x, then I can write that down. So 9 plus 6 plus 15 plus x, which is our unknown, divided by 4 equals 12. Okay. Now if I put my lines down and just try and solve it, first thing to do is I'm going to times both sides by 4 to get rid of that divide by 4. And so, and I'm going to add these numbers together because we know what the answer to this is. So, uh, five, 15 plus 6 is 21, uh, 21 plus 9 is 30. So, 30 plus x, and we've got rid of the divide by 4 because we've times it by 4, equals, and then 12 times 4, which is 48. Okay, next thing to do is take away that 30. So, we've got x equals. 18. So I know the answer is 18, but I can check that just to check whether I've got it right. So 9 plus 6 plus 15 plus 18 is going to be 48. 48 divided by the amount of numbers, which is 4. So 48 divided by 4 is 12. So that's my answer. Now you could have done that through just trying different numbers out, but imagine in the exam maybe the numbers are going to be a lot bigger. So this method is probably the quickest, but there are other methods, other ways of doing it. Okay, so with this question, there are quite a few steps we've got to go through. So it gives us some information about the parallelogram, that the area is three times the area of the triangle. So it looks like the place to start is the area of the triangle. So we're going to start off with the area of the triangle and it's really important for these types of questions to be really clear to the examiner what you're trying to work out. So the area is half times the base times the height. So it's half times uh, 8. I was going to write 6 there but let's keep it in the same order. Let's tidy up that 8 a little bit. Okay so half of 8 is 4 times 6 is 24 or we could do 8 times uh, 6 which is 48 and then half of that either way you get 24 okay so we know that the area of this is 24 centimeters squared and we know that the parallelogram is three times the area of the triangle so the area of parallelogram equals 24 which is the area of the triangle times by 3 now I know uh, 25 times 3 is uh, 20, uh, 75, so I'm going to take away 3 from that, it's 72. So equals 72 uh, centimetres squared. Now, I know that the height of it is 12, and I know to work out the area of a parallelogram, it is just base times height. And I know that the height is 12, and I know the area of it is 72. So I just need to solve this, quite an easy one to solve, because I'm just going to divide by 12. So the base is going to be 72 divided by 12, which is 6. 
so it's going to be six centimeters. Now we can work that out and just work backwards. So if this x here is six, six times twelve is seventy-two. Then I could do seventy-two divided by three, which is twenty-four, and uh, twenty-four is the area of the triangle. So you kind of know you've got the right answer because you can work backwards with it. For these types of, sort of questions, always make sure that you show your working. Show how you know something is something. So the way I would start this, and this is not the only correct answer, is I realize that these two are the same. So I know that 2y minus 50 equals 52. And the reason I know that is that they are corresponding angles. Now, some of you might know that as F angles, but make sure you write the word corresponding because they won't accept any other word. So I can solve this by first of all adding 50 to both sides. So that's 2y equals 102. And then I'm going to half both sides. So y equals 51. So I know y is 51, so I now know that this angle here is 51 degrees. Now I know that this is 52 degrees because if you look at this, and I'll use a different color, this angle here and this angle here are um, Z angles or alternate angles. Or you can say that this 52 degrees here is equal to this here, which is also 52, because they're vertically opposite angles. So I know that this one here, and I could call it a letter on the diagram, so I could say C. Uh, I don't think there's another C. So C equals 52, and show the examiner, right, that's because, well, let's go for alternate. Alternate angles with the original value. Okay, so we've got th three sides, or three uh, angles in a triangle. I've got way too many colors going on here. So to work out x, so x equals, it's going to be 180 minus 51 plus 52. So work out what 51 plus 52 is, and then take away from 180. And the reason is angles in triangle. Okay, so I know that 51 plus 52 is going to be 103. Therefore, that's going to be uh, 77 degrees. So my answer is 77 degrees. Okay, so this is quite a complicated looking question, but the most important thing is we break it down. So it says a circle is drawn inside a square. A square has a height of 12 centimeters. So the first thing to notice is it's a square. Therefore, the width is also going to be 12. And be careful to look out for that. Whenever you've got a square, they might only give you one of the dimensions. They won't always say it's a 12 by 12 square. Okay, so you've always got to assume that the other one, or you've always got to know that the other side is going to be the same. Okay, so let's work out the shaded area. So the thing we notice is it's like a quarter of the square, but with the circle removed. Okay, so the first thing to do is work out the area of the square. So area of square. Okay, so the area of the square is going to be quite easy. It's going to be 12 times 12, which is 144 centimeters squared. Okay, next thing to work out is the area of the circle. Okay, now this you need to remember the formula, which is pi r squared. Okay, and that you do need to know because you're not given that in the exam. So it's going to be pi times, and now what is the radius of that circle? So the radius is halfway across the circle. Now the circle has the same height as the square, or the same diameter uh, as the square's height, okay? So the radius is half of that, so it's going to be 6. So it's going to be pi 6 squared. 6 squared is 36, and we write that as 36 pi, okay? 
Now, it's a non-calculator question, or it could be in the non-calculator, it could be in either, okay? But it does ask us to give our answer in terms of pi. So we're not gonna go any further than that. We'll leave it as 36 pi. Okay, so we need to work out the area of um, all of the outside, okay? So we're gonna do all of the outside, okay? Including this a shaded bit, okay? So area outside, circle. So I'm trying to show the examiner that I'm working out the area um, that I've shaded in red. So the area of that is the area of the square, which is 144. Take away the area of the circle, which is 36 pi. Okay. Now to work out the shaded area, which is what the question asked for. Now looking at that, we've got four parts. We've got this part, this part, this part, and this part, and all four of them are equal, and we only want one of them, okay? So to work out the shaded area, we get our answer from before, and we divide it by four. So we're gonna divide the 144 by four, and it's dead easy to divide by four, because you halve it, then halve it again. So half of 144, well half of 140 is 70, half of four is two, so that's gonna be 72. Then half of 70, half of half of 72 is going to be half of 70, which is 35. Half of two, which is one, so it's going to be, um, what did I say, 36. So it's uh, 35 plus one, which is 36. Okay, next we're gonna halve the 36 pi. So we only need to halve the number before the pi, and that would have the same effect. So we're gonna halve 30, uh, 36, or we're gonna divide it by four, but we're gonna halve it first, which is 18, then halve it again, which is nine. So we need to divide each one by four. So I've divided that by four to get to 36, and I've divided that by four to get to nine. So my answer is 36 take away nine pi. I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you really liked it, click like. If you really, really liked it and want to see more, click subscribe. Um, all these uh, questions are on our website, onmaths.com. So if you go to onmaths.com, go to Steam and Questions, you can have a go on this paper yourself. Uh, obviously the numbers change, like everything on onmaths, so you can keep trying it again and again until you get full marks. Thank you very much.